Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me today is one of the termagants for High Fleet Behemoth, which has been quite regularly requested. Now this one isn't quite as fast as some of the other Tyranid painting guides that I've done, because we're switching things up, it's not white and then, uh, there's a little bit more work to do. But all the same, it's nice and simple and easy to replicate. So all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So you've got your Gribbly, and the first thing to do is to prime them. Now I've used here White Scar because, as I mentioned, I'm going for kind of a hybrid look between the new and the older, slightly brighter finish. Now, if you wanted to, you want to lean into the more modern, darker finish, what I might suggest instead would be to use Gracia or a similar very light grey, because uh, that's going to give you a darker, more moody sort of red for the body. Uh, in particular, I'd suggest against Wraithbone, uh, mostly because that's going to make your red much more saturated and vibrant. And if you want the spooky finish, that's not what you want. Uh, all the same though, I am going to use White Scar, and hopefully you'll see why. So when it comes to painting the body, what I'm going to use is Blood Angel's Red. Uh, again, if you wanted a darker finish, then Flesh Terror's Red would work perfectly well. Uh, try and stay away from Baal Red though, because it's not going to give you quite the same contrast shading effect in the recesses as these ones do. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this over all of the body. Uh, I'm not terribly fussed if I do hit the uh, horns or the carapace or what have you. Uh, the only thing I really want to avoid is going to be uh, parts of his gun. So up around his hands and what have you. You see the, the hoses, I don't want to get those if I can avoid it. I'm starting off with quite a large brush, now, one of these little stiff bristled numbers, which is really good, as you can see, for just jamming in there. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about applying this perfectly. Remember that you are painting a horde army. So, Blood Angel's red, all of the skin. Now at this point, it can be a little difficult to tell how this is going to turn out, and <laughs> don't worry too much. If you do end up with any bits that you've missed, you can go back with a smaller brush and just tap a couple of dots of contrast into those recesses if necessary. Remember that we're not going to shade this with anything over the top, so those recesses, you need to make sure that you're getting the contrast all the way in. Now as for these pipes, or cables I guess, don't worry too much if you do get a little bit of red on them. What I'm going to use is some Cadian Flesh Tone and just carefully dab those in. The only bit I really don't want to hit here is going to be the red stuff. Uh, parts of the gun that are going to be black in a moment, I can run over a little without a worry. Alright, now comes the fun part. Now if you want to lean into a more orange finish for this, what I'd recommend using here is Luganath Orange, uh, which is quite bright, but I am instead going to stick to Kislev Flesh, because in my experience, highlighting red with a fleshy colour gives it this awful, natural, meaty finish, which is perfect for Tyranids, if you ask me. If you don't ask me, I've told you anyway. Uh, what I've got is one of my nice soft makeup brushes, because I want to leave next to nothing behind as I apply this. Uh, so working most of it out into a bit of old kitchen towel. You can dry brush the edge of the base to get a feel for what you'll leave behind. You'll see I'm not leaving very much at all. Even dry brushing along the carapace to give you a pretty good idea. Once you're satisfied, just very lightly across some of the more detailed bits of the red uh, meaty bits. Uh, concentrating on his face, his gun and what have you. If you find you apply too much, uh, what you can do is actually go back to your Blood Angel's Red and you can tidy this up very easily. Now what I'm applying is just a little bit of Druki Violet over the awful meaty parts and the gun itself, where I want a little bit more shading so that it looks a bit more interesting compared to the body. Now as that dries, I'm going to grab some Pallid Witch Flesh and I'm going to paint in his teeth with a nice fine brush. I'm also going to paint in his tongue with this and as well, uh, probably off screen, but I am going to try and dot in his eyes with this too. And I'm doing this now because if I make a mistake, the way I'm angling my brush, I'm going to hit the carapace on the top of his head, and uh, I haven't painted that yet, so it doesn't matter too much. Make sure that you're also painting in his tongue, because we've got plans for that later. And I'm also going to add a tiny wee dot of this 
onto the awful, awful eyeball thing. I might need some more on my brush. And now for those eyes, I'm going to use Imperial Fist to yellow them in. Now if you don't want to use Pallid Witch Flesh, or you've just got white and that's what you want to stick to, don't worry, it's going to look fine. Now it's time to paint in his tongue. What I've got here, this is actually Deep Purple from the Vallejo Express range, which is very similar to Contrast. Um, I'm using this because I don't have Leviathan Purple with me, and honestly, I quite like these uh, Express range. Now at last, with all of that done, it's time to turn our attention to the carapace. Now there's quite a lot of black stuff on the Behemoth miniatures, so I'm going to use Black Legion for all of it. I'm going to start by using a, this is a medium shade brush, and I'm going to paint in first of all his carapace, and then I'm going to swap down to a smaller brush to paint the other little bits like his claws and the gun casing, that sort of stuff. So take your time with this. And if you do hit any of the red stuff, don't worry too much. You just grab some uh, red paint and cover it up. But try to be careful. Just remember that you are painting a horde army. So don't worry if it's not perfect. Okay, now we're looking a lot more done. <laughs> uh, if you want a more rich blue, what you could try would be instead something like Leviathan blue on the carapace. Um, I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference based on what I'm going to do now, which is to grab some Calidor Sky and one of my little makeup brushes again, although a small dry brush will work perfectly well for what I've got in mind here. What we're going to do, work some of that into my bristles, and you don't have to get all of it out this time, because what I want is to dry brush, or rather overbrush almost, against the detail and catch kind of half of these armor plates in blue. You'll see I'm not getting very much on at first, so a little bit more paint. Let's go along his head too. So what I want here is to get that nice blue tint to the edges of the armor. And uh, yeah, just build your color up. If you do get any on the red, again, unless it's a really prominent area, don't worry too much about it. It'll pretty much fade away once you've got a whole legion of these guys on the table. Now if you do want to bulk out that blue color a little bit more, you can then start dry brushing from the opposite direction. And uh, you're going to build up more of the blue about halfway along these uh, armor plates. And now for that sharp icy edge, what I have is Fenrisian Gray. And we'll do the same thing again, just very lightly catching all the edges. And this time being a bit more sparing. You'll see real quickly how that comes out. So all over the carapace with this. Now remember I mentioned you can tidy up with some normal acrylic, any skin that you've overdone. And what I've got is some Evil Sun Scarlet, and you can very quickly cover over that. Uh, if you want to, you find you've covered over the bits that you wanted to stay uh, fleshy, and go back to your Kislev Flesh, and very lightly highlight with that too. And as always, bear in mind that you are painting a Horde army. So I've been quite fussy and I've gone through that tidy up because I want to show you what done looks like. Uh, but once you've got 30 of these guys on the table, if anybody points out, oh, there's a little bit of blue at the back of his head, uh, you can push their nose in. <laughs> Don't let anybody fussy about a Horde army, trust me. The last thing I'm going to do is grab some Storm Vermin fur. And one of my grimy little brushes from the stationery aisle, I recommend cheap brushes, man. You'll find them at all sorts of places, and they have all sorts of uses. Do pick up any little cheap bits of rubbish, which look like they might be fun to have a play with, because you'll often find a use for them. So I'm just going to dry brush the other black bits that we haven't touched with a little bit of Storm Vermin fur. Then I'm going to take this fella outside, hit him with a matte varnish, pop a base on him. Uh, base recipe will be in the description, so you won't miss out there. Let's get a look at High Fleet Behemoth, all done. And there at last, our termagant for High Fleet Behemoth is complete. Now like I mentioned, this one is going to take a little bit more work than some of the other High Fleets. Uh, for example, Leviathan in particular is very, very simple by comparison. But if you want something a little bit more striking on the table, I think this works quite well. It is a mix between a little bit more work and still, I think, quite a simple result. So one I quite like the look of. 
So next week is going to be Kraken, and after that there's going to be a little bit of a break from the Tyranids, because I think I've painted enough bugs <laughs> for a little while. But uh, do keep asking if there's any specific High Fleets you want to see. Um, I will be bearing them in mind, and more Tyranids will be coming over time. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in my paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you very much, folks. You are the ones that keep this going. If you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.